This is Street Chance on SWBN TV. Pretty excited and glad to be back on this platform for our weekly program, Street Chance on SWBN TV. As always, my name is Comfort Isaac, and coming with me is Abbasio Fon Timothy. Abbasio the moment is before us. Okay, let's maximize the moment and dive into the discussion of today. Of a truth, we know offenses must surely come as recorded in the Holy Scriptures. However, if someone constantly and committedly offends you, will you totally forgive the individual and why? In addition, will you relate with the individual as you used to before the offenses? These were the issues we took to the streets to find out how our people will react. The response is, hold your breath. And let's watch along. My name is Tijani. Okay, you know, life is dynamic. Life is dynamic, so... I can actually forgive the person severally, depending on my relationship with the person. I'm actually a different person. My opinion could not be yours. But... Like, if it is my wife that offends me severally, it depends on the situation that is offending me on. I believe if you discuss it with this particular person that is offending you on several occasions, the person won't offend you again. Probably the person could be offending you innocently. But if you discuss it out with the person, I don't think the person will be an idiot to keep on offending you on the same issue. You get? Like, um, maybe my wife or girlfriend. You get? And she offends me on a particular stuff. I feel hot, you know, but I feel discussing issues actually um, set to issues. If I discuss it with her, I'll be like, you see, this thing you do actually hurts me. I wouldn't want you to repeat it again. I will give her reasons why she shouldn't do it, why I feel offended by how she reacted and all that. I don't think she would do it again. And if she does it again, that would be a deliberate action. You get and when you do things deliberately, I also find a reason why we should do it deliberately. Did she find it um, fun in getting me angry or something? If I look at it in that aspect and I realize that um, she just do it for fun, then I'll play along. Because I don't see a reason why somebody will keep on offending me over and over and over again. You get that shouldn't be a question even. Really, if you offend me now, I believe discussing issues actually say two issues. You do it over and over again, it becomes an attitude. Then I will see if I can put up with that attitude of yours. If I cannot, we split. Um, personally, forgiveness mm, is kind of a thing that is not easy going with me. I don't like forgiving easily. So when you hurt me severely, <laughs> to take to take a lot for me to forgive you and I'm a kind of person if you betray my trust that's for the people that are there to me it takes a lot whole lot for me to like fall back in place and be with you so forgiving you <laughs> after you hurt me severally I think I don't I can't it will take a while so uh, it will take time Some sometime I might not even forgive you as we 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 are not very close we distance we are distant from each other ahead it will just slide or anytime I come around or i see you i feel hot like <clears throat> as though it's fresh Thanks. so that means i've been forgiven not as before but we could relate but not everything we could just go if we not no no I, I relating the relationship will will now now be on a different level. It won't be as though before. Because um betray my trust, I cut it out. Yes, I will because even God teaches us how to forgive and forget. So I will same as God did to us. I will not relate with the person like before 
because I don't want the what the person did to me to repeat itself again. Yes, I'll forgive the person because they said um, the Bible teaches us that we should forgive and forget. I'll forgive the person and then I will try my best to forgive it, even though I will know that it's, it's not easy. Because whenever I see the person, I will remember what he or she has done to me. Yes, I'll relate with the person, but not as before. I'll eat with you with the long spoon so that you not do what you have done to me before again. It depends on the level of, 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 of uh, um, hurt the person has done to you. In my own case, I... Like I said earlier on, you avoid the person. You can relate with the person. If the person needs help, in your capacity, you can help. But that relationship may, depends on you now. And depending on the person's um, character. There are some people that you just say, ah, let me just avoid this person because this is how the person is. So you can still relate. I'm Joy. I'll forgive the person in the sense that the Bible says we should forgive one another. That is the only reason. No. Because the same Bible says we should be wise. We should be wiser than the serpent. So I will not be able to relate with the person like that, the way I was relating with the person. In the sense that I don't want the same thing to happen again. So that I will not lose my temper or something. My name is Joy. Why? Because if I, if I forgive the person, my mind will be clear, but the closeness will not be that too intact again. I'll be watching the person closely so that so, the person will not hurt me more and more again. So that's my reason. Mm, it will not be used to the way it used to be before because I don't trust anyone. He may like do things that me, I will not like again. So it's better we see ourselves, we greet and we go our different ways. Yes, a relationship is built be with a trust. That when you trust someone, you, if I may tell you this is what I am into, you, you tell me what you are into. But if you are hiding what you are doing, I mean why I disclose mine to you. That means there's no friendship, there's no relationship. That is it. I'm Eunice by name. Yes. Uh, that's a difficult one, though. But if the person is willing to change, I don't have an issue with that. But if it continues, that means the person is not willing to change, right? The person is not willing to change, and the person wants to continue living that life and probably not thinking about how you feel. That's a fact. So forgiveness, <laughs> my dear, um, it's going to be difficult. So you can't continue forgiving someone that knows what he or she is doing to you. You can't continue that way. It's like hurting yourself or displeasing yourself to please someone else or making the person comfortable in that situation because they feel like I've hurt you once, you forgive me, yeah? I hurt you twice, you forgive me. They are not comfortable in that shell. They feel like they should keep doing it and you keep forgiving them. So walking away, sincerely speaking, that is the best decision you can make for yourself, nothing else. Just walk away, put your life in check, and be sure, if, if it's possible, go no contact. Because they are, still, they are very manipulative. People, are, people like that are very manipulative. They are very mad. They know how to get you back if they want. Because they know your soft spot. They know you have a kind heart. They know you will still forgive. That's if they are close to you. Right? So walking away and going no contact is just the only solution. It can't be the same. It's like beating a child and asking them not to cry. Asking the child not to cry, right? It can't be the same. The trust I had for that person before won't be the same. The relationship wouldn't be the same. The communication wouldn't be the same. We might just be there. Maybe I just want to be there. Right? I'll just keep myself in that space, but it will not be the same. That's the truth. It won't. You can't get the me you got the first time. That's the truth. My name is Prince Eric. If someone if someone there for me, then it hurts me. I will forgive the person. Why I forgive the person is that because there is nothing goes for nothing. At least I will count it as that is his life or our lifestyle. So I will just let him live the way she like, the way she like, and I won't I won't I won't pick anything. I won't carry anything in mind against him, or I will just live his way for or I wait for her for him to live. The reason is that I have to be very careful where the person is because 
I don't know where he's thinking. I only know about myself. I don't know about him. So I have to be very careful for where it is. Let me speak as a Christian. Uh, you forgiving somebody, you don't do the person a favor. You do, you do yourself a favor. That's why in Christian fold, we have what we call believers and unbelievers. Believer is somebody who believes from Genesis to Revelation what the Bible says. You know, like the apostle, they asked Christ, how teach us how to pray. He, told, he simply told them that pray in this way. A father which is at in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that kingdom. He told them that when you forgive, that, that prayer that he taught them, show us that when you forgive your father which is in heaven, which is our father, or likewise forgive us. Means the opposite side of it said that means that if you don't forgive, that your heavenly father will not equally forgive you. Then do you need you need to ask yourself, do I need my father in heaven to forgive me? That's condition of your heavenly father to, to forgive you. Because there is something I always say to people. I say in the kingdom of God, there's something that requires to acquire what you desired. Do you desire God to forgive you? There's something that required. You need to forgive somebody. Whosoever that, that may be, it may, be it may not be the person that's so dear to you. The person may not dear to you. You forgive him because it's a command from heaven that shows that you are a believer. A believer is somebody who believes Genesis to Revelation. Whatever that is recorded in the Bible, that's a believer. And you, now you have to ask, your course, call your, uh, ask yourself, I am a believer. And if, if you are a believer, you need to believe what the Bible says. I need to forgive my brother. No matter. Yes. You see, in the days of Christ and the disciples, Christ knew that Judas want to betray him. If you read that place, he called him my brother. See, my bro- you see, one of you will betray me. He didn't see Judas as enemy. Even though that he knew they were eating the same pot. But one thing that we as a Christian, because we are not the same rank, the same, that's the same anointing with Christ. The only difference that you do that, the way that you bring the person so close before will not be the same. But if you want to do it at Bible commands, go and read the book of Philippians. Is it Philippians? When you were talking to Onesimus, he said that I am sending this Onesimus to you. I am sending him to you. Whatever that may offend you, put it on my course. Put it on my account. I will repay all. He bring Paul, or, or, Paul bring Onesimus to himself. Totally. That if you want to learn about forgiveness, go and read that portion of uh, Paul and Onesimus. When you read that place, you know what forgiving means. That you are to forgive. Forget that. Somebody that is, that is, somebody that is not being, somebody that is, you know, being so bad, so wicked, can come back to Christ. That same person, you may win the person again by your character, how you draw him or her closer to you. But as a human being, I know that it's very hard. You may not draw him as close so much, but you still love him and bring him closer to you. By bringing him closer to you, he may have what you call total repentance. What you think that he does before, he may not do it. Onesimus was not like that before. He changed. Everything about him changed. So that's what I would say. I'm Rebecca. Um, I will. I know sometimes some things could be hurtful, but then I will because I say our father every day. So as long as I'm praying for God every day to forgive me, I will also forgive the person no matter what the person does. I might not really relate uh, with the person the same way. Uh, it's easy to forgive, but not really easy to forget. But I'll try, depending on if the person, you know, changes or so. In some way. Yes, I'll forgive the person. And I bet depends on what the person is doing. If it's something that is hot, so I will mm-hmm. stay far from the person. But if it's something that is not hot, it's... Or keep on relating with the person very well. 
I will, I will, if the person keep offending me, I will keep forgiving the person, but I will not be very close to the person. That, that friendly will not be that much again with the person. I will keep forgiving the person, still being close. Touchy, you will say. Did I guess right? Yeah. And now to see what the Bible says about all this, Pastor Fon will introduce our studio guest. Over to you, dear brother. So um, today we are driving to the city of Abuja to meet with one of our amiable father in the Lord, a missionary and the one that has traveled to all nations to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. No other person than engineer Richard Ioha. Good to have you here on board with us, sir. Welcome. My name is Abasi Ofon Timothy. Thank you very much. God bless you. So, so I will begin by the, um, asking you the first question. Um, so what does God say in his word with regards to forgiveness as it concerns offenses? Yeah, we thank God. This is an interesting subject for uh, the world of Christianity because today's Christianity um, kind of relegates this. And uh, there are all kinds of philosophies about the subject of forgiveness. And uh, people have come up with their own ideas of what forgiveness means to them. And it is usually based on what is convenient for them and what is not. But what does the word of the Lord says? I will just read two scriptures to, to answer this. In Exodus chapter 34, at uh, verse 6 and 7, and the Lord passed by him, that was Moses, this was an encounter Moses had with God, and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Verse 7, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, or and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. Now, when you look at verse, I mean, Luke chapter 17, verse 1, then said Jesus unto his disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come but woe unto him through whom they come. And you will, when we read further, as other questions come, we shall be answering that. It is clear from the word of God, these scriptures put together, that there will be offenses. God, our God, acknowledges that there will be offenses. But he introduces himself as a merciful God who forgives sin, who forgives offenses, who blots out offenses. So we see that this is God's word of first words concerning offenses. Yes, there will be offenses. God says there will be. In fact, Jesus says it is impossible, but that there will be offenses. And then the Lord introduces himself as the one who forgives offenses. Amen. I think I'll stop there so that we can take other questions. Amen. Okay, sir. Does man have the capacity to forgive his fellow man and perhaps to forget as well? All right. Now, that is another very dicey one. Does man have the capacity to forgive his fellow man and maybe to forget it? Well, the answer is yes. There is a God-given ability to forgive sin. And one thing about the Lord is that if he says you can do something, then you can do it, irrespective of the conditions around you. Let me look at the scripture. John chapter 20, verse 23. This is what the Lord said. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. This was the Lord giving authority to the disciples to forgive sins. And if there is anyone who has been given the authority to forgive sins, it means 
man has the capacity to forgive. How be it, it's not in himself, it is a God-given capacity. In the Old Testament, in Leviathan, the sin offering, when a person has committed sin and he comes before the priests with his sin offerings, the priest will make him lay hands and confess the sin upon the head of a, a ram or a goat that was to be used for the sacrifice, and he will confess his sins, and the priest will kill the sacrifice and sprinkle the blood upon the altar. And then the scripture says that his sin shall be forgiven. Who performed the sacrifices that enabled the forgiveness of that sin? A human priest. So I can say on the authority of God's word that yes, man does have the capacity, a God-given capacity to forgive sins. Amen. So we want to also examine the practicability of this um, issue of offenses and forgiveness. How practicable is it if you have someone who is constantly hurting you, constantly and persistently hurting you, should you, would you apply wisdom on how you handle the matter by continuing to relate him with the person? Or is there anything that can be done in that situation? Someone is constantly hurting you. Should you forgive the person and keep relating with the person? Uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is the authority. In all of these, I will again appeal to him. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 21, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times, Jesus, the Lord, but until 70 times seven. And um, again, in Luke chapter 17, verse 4, and if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn unto thee, saying, I repent. What does he say? He said, thou shalt forgive him. Oh. All right. I will take that. I just wanted to read those scriptures to show us a few things. Okay. One, the question is how practicable is it? Somebody keeps hurting and offending you. So you can hear the counsel of the Lord directly from his mouth. He says, if he comes to us seven times in a day and turn to us seven times in a day to say, I'm sorry, he says you should forgive him. And then Peter actually asked him, how many times? Seven? Jesus said, no, 70 times seven in one day. If he comes to you repenting, he said, forgive him. Now, that leaves a condition we may discuss at another question. The thing is this, that it is practicable. This is difficult, but it is doable. This is one of the main reasons that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, verse 26, he said that the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in his name, that's in my name, said the Lord Jesus Christ. He said he will bring to our remembrance all things whatsoever he says to us. Now, the word comforter is paraclet, and it means one who is called alongside to help, a helper. So the fact is this, that we have a helper within us that can help us to forgive and to relate with the person as though that thing never occurred before. Let us look at it in the light of redemption. When God forgives you, he not only blots out that sin, he forgets it. The psalm tells us that he puts it in the sea of forgetfulness. He said, your sins and iniquities will I remember no more not to remember our sins and iniquities anymore. Now, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He comes to help us to forgive. 
But again, should we continue to relate to the person as though that thing never happened? Now, the scripture says this, the word forgiveness, the word to forgive, maybe I should use that to explain this. The word that is translated for forgive is nasa in the Old Testament, and it's afemi in the New Testament. And the word means to lift up somebody from the ground and lead them up to the original or previous estate that they had with you. Now, take the scenery as an example, this scenario as an example. Somebody offends you, and then he comes to you and falls to the ground on his face, pleading for forgiveness. And you reach out to the person, and you take the person up from the ground and lead them up to your chest to hug them. That symbolizes relating to them no longer on the basis of what they did to you, but now as an equal in terms as far as that offense is concerned. That's why Jesus said, if he turns to you and repent, he said, forgive him. So the concept of forgiveness incorporates in it the idea of forgetting what the person has done to you and not using it, using it as a basis to relate to the person. Now, the, 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 you know, after offenses, is it possible to relate with the person as they, they, like I said, it's yes. And I have described the concept of forgiveness. So these are some of the things. You can tell, ask me, but how possible is it to forget? The Holy Spirit can do that within us. But even if you should forgive and it should have come across to you to this extent, that even though you remember that offense, the bite, the sting is no more there. Oh, this person once did this. Oh, but he repented. I've forgiven him. He's a good man. We cannot uh, continue to, you know, uh, relate on the basis of what is past. God actually expects you to not relate with somebody on the basis of a forgiving offense. If you are using an offense, a previous offense, as a basis, after you forget, as a basis to relate with somebody, then it means you're really not forgiving the person. So let the depth of Christianity take a hold of us to the point where when somebody offends us and repents, we forgive him and never makes it anymore a basis to relate with that person. Praise the Lord. Before Comfort asks her question, I know she's, she has a question to ask. So let me do a follow-up question from the scripture you just read. What if the person, as Jesus Christ you know, described, that if the person comes to you and repents, you should forgive the person? What if the person doesn't come to you and doesn't show any form of remorse or repentance? Should you still forgive the person? Well, yes, the scripture prescribes how to deal with such a person. If a brother offends you, he says you should go to him one-on-one, -on -one, tell him the offense. If he, will, if he repents, you have won your brother. But if he refuses to repent, take one or two more persons with you to go and talk with him. If he still would not repent, then report the matter to the church. Then if he ignores the church or despises the church, the Bible commands you to treat the person like an unbeliever. That is a different thing altogether. I, I think what we are dealing with is forgiveness. When we are talking of forgiveness, a person repents of a sin. You forgive him. If he avoid you altogether. There is no way of seeing it. Let's give an example. Somebody offends you and he travels out. He goes to one remote part of the world and you never see the person again. Should you retain that offense within you? The answer is no. You should still forgive him. There's no relationship anyway. He's not around to hurt you again. But if he's around and he continues the same thing, that should be taken beyond yourself to the church to handle. And if the church now steps in and it despises the church, 
then that person can be treated like an Eden according to the scriptures. So that is a different matter altogether. But for a brother who is humble and comes on his face before you to say, oh, I'm sorry for this thing I have done to you, the scripture demands that you forgive him and never make that offense a basis of relating with that person anymore. Amen. Great insight, sir. So are there consequences, spiritual and otherwise, for not forgiving offenses? Oh, yes, there are grave consequences. And this is why we have to bend backwards to forgive and write off whatever offense anybody, um, whatever offense we have against anyone. The first consequence of not forgiving is that you risk the father not forgiving your own sins. In Matthew, Mark, sorry, chapter 11, verse 26, he said, but if you do not forgive, neither will your father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. To me, that is scary. Praise the name of the Lord. That is very scary. That, you know, I know where I came from. I know my background. And I know how it is that the Lord forgave all my sins. That is my joy every day that I am forgiven. And I do not have to be called to account anymore, anytime, forever, on account of my sins because they've been washed away by the blood of Jesus. And am I now going to allow an offense to not bring all of that back is very dreadful and I would not want to even wish that for myself or for anybody else. Yes, the first consequence is that you risk God not forgiving your old sins. God not forgiving your own offenses. If you want your own offenses forgiven and blotted out, part of the condition is that you should forgive all who have trespassed against you. Number two consequence is that your name can be blotted out of the book of life. When you do not, you know, forgive or repent, you can, your name can be blotted out. In Exodus chapter 32, from verse 33 and, uh, 32 and 33, Exodus 32, 32 and 33, Moses had a you know, a transaction with God. God wanted to blot out the name of Israel. He wanted to write, you know, destroy Israel and raise a new tribe with Moses alone. Moses, for the meek man that he was, said, no, if you are not going to forgive these people their sins, then blot my name out of your book. And verse 33, and the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So unforgiven sins can result in somebody not being blotted out of the book of life. And that is very dreadful. You say my name is written in the book of life. There is no such thing as, you know, once saved and forever saved. No, it's not that. Unless you persevere to the very end, then your salvation is you know, effect is affected, is effective. But if a person will not, you know, have their sins removed, blotted out, I mean, then their names can be removed from the book of life. The third consequence is that your offerings will not be acceptable to God. This was why in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 through 24, the Lord said, if you bring your sacrifice to the altar, and there, remember that your brother have an ought against you. In other words, there is an unforgiven situation between you and your brother. He said, leave your sacrifice at the altar. It's no use. Go back, be reconciled to your brother, and then come back and make your sacrifice. So you can see that these are just some of the consequences that can happen, that can result if we do not forgive. So it is important. As a matter of fact, it's imperative 
is a demand on the Christians, no matter the situation, no matter how offended you were, you want your name remaining in the book of life, forgive. You want your sacrifices to be acceptable to God, forgive. And uh, if you want to, you know, the Father to also forgive you whatever be the magnitude of what you've done, then forgive. I think the answer is yes, there are consequences. And I listed at least three of these consequences. There could probably be more consequences to this. Amen. So I noticed that while you were talking, aside from today, you're always smiling as if you've never been yeah. offended. As if you've never been offended before. So let me ask you, <laughs> have you been offended before? And if yes, how did you handle this? <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. somebody has offended me before and I have also offended people. You know, you when you live in this world, you find that there will be offenses. Jesus said it is impossible, but that there will be offenses. Now, um, yes, I will relate a particular uh, incident where somebody offended me and it was so bad he not only offended me, he also uh, despised my wife. He also offended my wife. And mm -hmm. it was so bad. You know, for us, you know, married men, the personal offense is not as painful as the one that is done to your wife. <laughs> you know? So I was so, I was, so I felt so bad. And I was offended. And uh, I was about to go for missions at that particular time. And I realized that I was going for a warfare and I could not afford to have an offense in my heart. And it would open the door for so many things. And uh, for those of us who um, are into deliverance, you are in warfare at all times, even when you did not look for trouble, you are in warfare. So I had to forgive. I said, God, this is painful. I had a time of prayers. And I settled with the Lord and I forgave him. And I told him I'd forgiven him. And we went on, we traveled. I traveled, came back and we went on. And any time, and this is somebody that I had, the time we meet and we are having a dealing, my mind goes back to the offense. I, will, I realized now that I was having problems forgetting, and it was beginning to become a basis for my of my relationship with him. Before anything, I would say, no, 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 no. I won't use this brother for this, because if I do, he is not faithful. Even when the brother has repented, my mind will tell me he's not a faithful person. No, you can't commit this into his hand. <laughs> so... When I realized that was happening, I went back to God. I said, God, I must not keep this state of mind against this brother. And the Lord opened my eyes. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. And showed me that it was the devil wanting me to hate him and to not relate to him any further. As there were certain intercessory uh, positions I held in his life, and I could... If I just renege from it, some God will have to send somebody else to stand in that gap. And the Lord wanted me to continue and to train me too. He said, you have to, what, I said, Lord, but what do I do? It's not my mind keep going back. The Lord said, go and buy a gift for him. So I went, bought a very unique gift, wrote his name on it, and went to him smiling. I said, brother, the Lord laid in my heart, this is for you. I want you to know you mean a lot to me. You are my brother. The relationship between you and me is beyond, I mean, is superior to biological relationships. And I want you to know that, have that at the back of your mind every time. Do you know that healed our relationship? That healed us completely. And I saw a whole lot of results of it in my life and in his life thereafter. So I was able to handle that. Let me say, but the way I recommend that you handle this kind of thing, when you realize you are having difficulty forgiving or letting go, take off a visit. You, your family, go and visit the brother. 
especially if it's one you know have repented, but it's the problem. Go and visit him and say, hey, did they have food in this house? Me, I'm going to eat. I'll have fellowship with you. Exhibit a great level of friendliness with that person. The devil does not like it when you are now making, when somebody is benefiting because you have decided to forgive. We'll leave you alone. Do you know, but for the fact that I wanted to use this as an example here today, mostly I don't remember that anymore. It's no longer a basis of my relationship with him. If I have a situation of the same kind we had that was an offense, I will trust him. I will rely on him to do something something good with it, not minding what had happened in the past. But if I allow what happened in the past to become a basis, my basis of judging him, of determining whether I should relate with him to this level or not, or limits my level of confidence and trust in my brother, then I have a problem, not him. So the way I handle it is take a gift for the brother, do some friendly acts and works with that person. If there's a need for you and need to do something together, deliberately choose him or her and relate with them. Let them know that what is in the past is in the past. And the devil will leave you alone because he doesn't like to see you smiling all the time. So he will leave you because you are not going to be fulfilling his will. Praise the Lord. Yeah. My heart is excited at that. Just give us a counsel for our viewer based on offenses and forgiveness. Those who have been offended before or those who cause offenses. Amen. Well, yeah, well, so my counsel is this. Number one, avoid offenses. There is a woe to those who cause offense. So don't, if you find yourself causing offense, repent immediately, withdraw immediately. Jesus said in Luke 17, verse 1, offenses will surely come. He said, woe to those who will cause such offenses. I don't want to be a partaker of such a woe. So I counsel, avoid offenses. Avoid offending people. And to those who are offended, I counsel you to forgive. I mean, you are not, um, you are not losing anything. You are losing nothing. Like somebody defined uh, unforgiveness. He said unforgiveness is like uh, taking the punishment for somebody's indiscretion. Now, they, 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 you know, offended you. And now you are taking the punishment for their indiscretion. I don't want to suffer somebody else's punishment. So I would say forgive. You are not losing anything. It may at the moment make you look like, oh, you don't have the bite force. You don't have the power. That's why you did nothing especially when the person looks at your face and tells you you can't do nothing. You know, it can be very painful. But don't let their words get to you because they said you can't do nothing. Of course, there's something you can do. But because Christ is your Lord and that you are here to represent him and to occupy till he comes, you forgive, you let go, you pick up that repentant offender and put him or her to your chest, and say, I forgive you. I lift you back to the estate you once had with me. And that will be the best thing to do. You have a lot, you know, to gain. You have heaven to gain. You have divine character to gain. You have an inheritance to gain because you forgave. God bless you. We'd like you to say a word of prayer for so many who might be struggling with unforgiveness that the Lord will help them. Let us pray. Almighty Father, thank you for your mercies. Thank you because the plan of redemption is hinged upon the forgiveness of our sins and the restoration of the sinful offender back to the estate of fullness in Christ Jesus. Father, this is the whole concept of forgiveness in the atonement. Lord, I say thank you. I pray for that man, that woman, that brother, that sister that has been offended. Lord, it is painful. I ask that the blood of Jesus Christ will avail for them. 
that the power of the blood of the Lamb will blot out the sting of this offense from their hearts and from their minds. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that the Holy Spirit will help them, Lord, to release themselves from the bondage of unforgiveness. Lord, I pray for those who are causing offense that you will deal with their hearts by the strength of your spirit and they, until they lose the ability to offend others and to create offenses. Lord, I pray that you will help that who has been hurt to recover. Let there be a recovery. Let the power of the blood wash away all the stain and all the pain and all the offense and all the retaliatory plans that the enemy have thought to put upon them. Oh, our God, arise and help those who have been offended. Arise and help those who are suffering in pain from the effects of such offenses. Those who have lost things, let there be restoration. You said you will restore the years that the canker worms have eaten and the caterpillars have eaten. Those who incurred losses as a result of offenses, I pray, let there be restoration. I command a restoration. In the name of Jesus, I command that they become rewarded by gains from your holy presence as you restore them and restore to them that which was taken away from them. Thank you, mighty Father, for hearing our prayers. Once again, we bless SWBN. SWBN, you will prosper. You will increase. You will expand. You will grow until every doorstep of men and women living on planet Earth is touched by the message of the kingdom arising from you. Blessed be the name of the Lamb of God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for sparing your special time and giving us godly counsel on offenses and forgiveness. So good to have you on our program, sir. And I hope that next time when we reach out to you, you would respond as you have done now. Thank you, sir. God bless you anytime. The Lord prosper your ministry. The Lord prosper this television program. The Lord will take you across the globe and bless this ministry tremendously until the gospel of the kingdom gets to the doorsteps of every man that is upon the planet Earth. The Lord will use this television station mightily. God bless you. SWBN, in Jesus Christ's name. Okay, if you are our guest on this program this week had been an Abuja-based minister of the gospel, engineer Richard Osagi Iyoha. Comfort. Did you hear? Can you hear it? Uh -huh. Receive the counsel and do something about it. Did you hear? I've heard. Anyways, I've heard and will do something about it. All right. So, beloved viewer, this is where we must round off on this program for now. Hope you learned something and appreciated the program while it lasted. Remember to keep us company in our next outing. Until then, we've been Abbasio and Timothy and Comfort Isaac. Like, share, comment and subscribe to our channel. This is SWBN TV. Bye-bye.